I looked out over my cliff here, and all of those little friends were circling. Those are black hawks. Locally, we all tend to call them turkey vultures. They're really beautiful hawk-shaped vultures. They do go after things that are dead. But they don't have the, like, ugly bald head. Very cool large blackbirds. So it's Wednesday now. My one flower that I talked about during my permaculture fails is in pretty full bloom down here in the areas I can't get to it. That's the sweet pea everlasting. Ah, uh, yep. It's a uh, definite invasive. I planted one. Now I have an entire neighborhood's worth. The pink and white flowers. Not these, though, in the middle. That is crown vetch, or goat's rue. And I'm really frustrated to see it, because it's also an invasive and really hard to get rid of. Bleh. At least they're all nitrogen fixers. And on the cliff, not in my garden, but... Goat's rue is hard to control where it's at. So yeah, I was out here just kind of looking around, seeing how things are doing. This is almost tall enough to do another layering video with it. Um, you want to use ones that aren't fruiting, so I'm going to have to wait a minute here and <laughs> see what I can manage. I did another burn. And I'm planning to dredge the fire pit before I put more in. But after I dredge the fire pit, because I'm going to use at least some of this for um, dust bath bedding for the quail, I learned something extremely interesting, and that's that sand, of all things, is at very low stock nationally during COVID-19 right now. And uh, under normal circumstances, it would be easy enough to get, but right now, not so much. Once I have that cleaned out, I'll be able to finally clear up this heap of junk that I threw there when I cleared off a good bit of this hillside. A couple weeks ago, so it's been in my way for a hot minute now. It went a swift. I don't know if you saw it. I think it just came back. Yep. There's evening birds that... Oh, there goes another black hawk. And whatever just... That was another swift. There we go. Lots of bird activity as, as dusk approaches. Yeah. So, we've got a lot of things in bloom. Ah... I watch a lot of permaculture videos a lot of the time, and, you know, I've got these new plants planted. Oh, hi, lightning bug. In places that aren't great, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the milkweed being taken over is a surprise. You know, it's a native, and it's extremely beneficial to wildlife, and it's edible. But also, what else can I possibly plant with it when I put it too many places? I didn't do the experimental, let's just put it here. So, I guess it's really good news that I've been watching a lot of permaculturists and observing that their high-density plantings do extremely well. Because, um, I think I'd be panicking about this a lot more otherwise. Oh dear, look at this. How'd that happen? That's frustrating. Oh, is that a pigeon pea coming up there? I think it is. No, yeah, and I got a couple of red osiers. Good, at least some of my seeds sprouted in here. 
It's going to be seed transplanting time for the new natives pretty soon. I've also been trying to get these um, more invasive, aggressive alliums out again. You know, as usual, these ones with the really round tops do flowers. These, the one I just pulled here that I'm wiggling at you, that is a hair top allium, and they will take over. You will not have anything else. So, uh, don't recommend planting them unless alliums won't grow on your ground, as was the case at my father's house, and is the reason that I got a false sense of security with those. I actually have to bake them to kill them. So, mm. yeah. Something doesn't smell right back here. Pardon my oomph noise. Uh, sage is blooming. The kiwi needs a heavy trimming. Whew. But the peas are kind of commingling with it. It's got more seeds to transplant back here. gotten old enough to recognize that these are definitely Saskatoons, which I didn't mark at the time that I planted them, so I just marked it that I planted something there. <laughs> uh, and then these, I believe, are magnolia trees. There's one mystery item coming up right there. And then let's kind of get past the more milkweed. Now, to be fair, I thought this one was a uh, phlox. But that one over there I did on purpose. Yeah. So all down in here I got even more red bud seedlings. So those pop up pretty easily, it turns out, which is great. Um... It means I can mark them as a relatively low-cost little baby tree. Anything that sprouts with relative ease can be a lower price point. Anything that I struggle to get in stock is a higher price point. I think it's a fair method of pricing overall. I do have to keep my competitors in mind too, so if it's something I have a lot of trouble growing and somebody else can do it cheaper, well, maybe I just won't stock that. Uh, Saskatoons are a difficult one. They transplant much better as seedlings, but they don't sprout particularly well from seeds from what I've figured out yet. The ones that I find growing typically are the ones that the birds left, which isn't great. Peas all over the place here. Oh, the area down in the corner there is doing good. My transplanted that had been heavily shaded, probably the fourth place that's been, of the fully native, um, you know, junk nursery <laughs> uh, hazelnut is actually taking. And then the elderberry in the corner, I had put... Comfrey underneath wood chips and then been watering it daily. Comfrey started to grow. I had to pull it out. Got some uh, scapes here that I need to harvest. I've already done about a third of the daylily harvest for today. That one there I've decided not to harvest because I'm sick of sticking my hand into the spider's web that is knitted through it, so this year that one's not getting harvested. Yeah. Even the runners are hard to propagate from the Saskatoons still. But I did see something about the middle wood off of winter cuts on the larger branches being able to be uh, placed as cuttings. So I'm going to try that in the late fall and see how that goes. But, yeah. I would really like to have this row here be a lot more dense. 
I'm going to go down the hill at some point and get some beech seeds when I can. Not beech. Basswood. The basswood is really putting on some large seeds down there, though I have not been able to access that particular tree in the recent three years, so that might be an unrealistic expectation. I did try to plant two American basswood seeds in fall, but they didn't take. It happens. Um, it's this one here. But if you keep it coppiced and there's a lot of new leaves, then it's a salad tree. And I'd like to have that in the back corner, making everything a lot more dense. It would want full shade in order to be well for salad. Since I piled in more soil around the base of the May Pop, it's actually rebounding quite well. It's starting to look really healthy, so I think I've got a happy plant there. More milkweed down there. And since I learned that the early sprouts of the milkweed can be harvested like asparagus, I shall definitely do that next year. There is too much. Uh, I shall also try eating the young seed pods this year because I certainly I don't need more seeds. I'm good. <laughs> I am I'm set. <laughs> so yeah. I also want to harvest the um, seed pods off of this that, that bloomed before they shed. Before they shed their seeds because this can really take over. And it turns out it's not a native variety. That'll actually probably be dinner. I'm going to double check that the seeds are also edible because the rest of the plant is. But yeah, these little seed pods are probably going to be in my dinner tonight. I want to try and ferment some daylily pods to kind of boost my digestion in the direction of being able to handle more of them. I think that would be really nice. It would also be really nice if I could perhaps figure out which... Of the Joe Pie was the seedling from last year. So I had one seedling Joe Pie, and that was pretty exciting. And I see two Joe Pies growing in this wide frame here. Yeah. I discovered that my competitors can do a much better price on asters than I can based on my sustainable practices. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop doing those and start with a lot more rare stuff. It's probably the case with goldenrod too. It's probably something I'm facing as far as like those not turning over. And I'm going to pot up the trees to a larger size. I had some really good input on this in that uh, some folks were saying that, well, one of my main customers was saying that uh, these little four-inch pot-sized trees, um, they're very likely to be treated as weeds in a garden when you first set them. And so a larger plant is desired. So I'm going to take that advice, pot everybody up, but then it's time to install some more and maybe cull some things that aren't selling. You know, make my, and check what's actually not growing at all. Make my stock a little more efficient. I think that'd be useful. I do. So I guess this turned into a bit of a nursery overview. Look at the elderberries starting to form. Yeah. 
And it only started because I saw a bunch of Blackhawks fly by. Oh, I've got to cut off the sage seeds too. Those sprout like little crazy people. <laughs> they do though. <sighs> oh yeah. Let's go down the hill real quick. Well, yeah, we'll do it. Elderberry's doing so well. Oop, I slipped. Where am I going to put those little dogwood seedlings? I need to keep at least one because they sprout off of cuttings really well. But since they're from seed, that's three pieces of genetic diversity that I could grow out. Well, I bet that was a deer, just based on the amount of calamity I hear in that direction. That's invasive bittersweet. So, still a good bit of weeding to do down here. But again, it's expansion space for for stock that's doing really well. I'm very pleased. So I'll probably end up planting the red osier dogwood down here somewhere. Though I'm not yet sure where. We'll see. I hope you're having a good day. It's only Wednesday, so <laughs> I guess they call it hump day. Not much going on. Just kind of quiet. Alright. Feel free to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed. Having a look around the garden. My, look how hungry the deer are. They've eaten my Sumac. Huh. All this. I've got a handful of plants. All this stumpy stuff. <laughs> That's hilarious. It'll be fine. It'll grow right back. So, yeah. If you've made it this far in the video, you definitely like my content. So, I hope to see you back in a video again soon. And thank you for being here. Take care. Bye.